we thank you and appreciate you so much for how good you've been to us. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Thank you for Sunday service. Thank you for the prayers that have been going on. Appreciate you. Thank you ahead for the Tuesday service. We thank you because you are the doer of all these things. We give you the praise. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Lift up your hands and adore him. Just worship him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. 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 Oh, shatarabakasatarababa. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we prayed. In Jesus' precious name we prayed. We're going to lift up our voices and just have not thank the Lord. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Psalm 7 verse 16. Psalm 7 verse 16. The Bible says his trouble shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down on his, on his own crown. Verse 15, I love verse 15. The Bible says in verse 15, he made a pit and dug it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. You're going to lift up your voice and say in the name of Jesus. I'm not enjoying it. Say in the name of Jesus. Throughout this anniversary. In the name of Jesus, whoever digs a ditch will fall into it. Anybody that wants to disrupt what the Lord wants to do in anyone's life, in the name of Jesus, the curse of the Lord rests upon them. No sickness. In the name of Jesus, you can't pray like that. Take authority. In the name of Jesus, whoever makes a beat, in the name of Jesus, they will fall into it. Instant judgment. In the name of Jesus, whoever makes a beat. If you look at verse 16, in the name of Jesus, verse 16, Marababaka Satarababa, his trouble shall return upon his own head. In the name of Jesus, come on, pray that judgmental prayer. Instant judgment. In the name of Jesus, every plot and plan of the enemy to do anything contrary to the will of God around this atmosphere. Whether on the internet, whether physically here, instant judgment. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray it. You're going to pray and say, Lord Jesus, position me aright in the spirit for this 25th anniversary. Pray that prayer. Position me aright for this 25th anniversary. In the name of Jesus, position me, O oh God. May I not be behind? Position me. Present that thing before the Lord. Say, Lord, remember me. In the name of Jesus, you may be a child and you've been asking God for one thing. Say, Lord Jesus, in this anniversary season, I receive what belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, position me aright for this anniversary. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 4, you may be wondering, why is it that we're not praying for the Holy Spirit to do No, the Holy Spirit commanded this. We are here to take authority over anything that is contrary to the will of God. In Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 4, it said, Nehemiah said, hear our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Anyone that says we will not rest, will not rest. From this minute, the Lord troubles our trouble. Can that amen be louder? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I command in the name of Jesus, every reproach the enemy is planning and plotting for anybody is turned on their head. Is turned on their head. In the name of Jesus. You're going to pray and raise your voice and say, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
Let this 25th anniversary deliver to me what belongs to me. Pray that prayer from your heart. Let this 25th anniversary deliver to me what belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let this 25th anniversary deliver to me what belongs to me. In my office, my family, that thing I'm trusting God for, let this 25th anniversary. Every good father, give good gifts if by package in the name of Jesus for this 25th anniversary belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, as Bishop Oedeku lands here, everything we're going to be doing on the 13th and on the 14th shall be to the glory of God. I shall be, I shall be lifted, I shall, I shall, I shall, I shall be positioned where I belong. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray it. In Esther chapter 7 verse 10. Esther 7 verse 10. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath subsided. You're going to pray as you are led of the Lord. But let me guide you. Anything anybody plotted, whether kidnappers want to kidnap people that attended the service or anything, in the name of Jesus, the Lord frustrate their plan. The very gallows they prepared for anybody, they will be hung there. In the name of Jesus, pray that prayer as your name of the Lord. Oh, Rabba Kasata Rabba. You are praying like you are part of those who have plans. <laughs> Oh, whether physical, whether spiritual, whether, whether on the internet, any plan that the enemy had, instant judgment. Today we execute the written judgment. We condemn no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, we condemn. Every plot of the enemy. Whether for a crisis, whether traffic, whether the weather, anything that would disrupt the fullness of God's blessings from touching the people, we condemn it. We come against it. We condemn it. In the name of Jesus, we take authority. We condemn it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, this morning we decree, we rose up early to command our day. And we decree that in the name of Jesus, this anniversary will take us to another level for the next 25 years. In the name of Jesus, we long life the Lord will satisfy us. No mishap, no kind of havoc. Every plot of the enemy is arrested. In the name of Jesus, no bad news from anywhere. In the name of Jesus, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. The will of the Lord shall be done. Father, we vow to give you the glory. By the time the anniversary is over, in the name of Jesus, we shall be refreshed. We shall be refreshed. We shall be fired up. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a hand and take your seat. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18 is my deliberation. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, but now and forever. Amen. If you read the TPT version, TPT version, it says, but continue to grow. Okay? Continue to grow. Look at your neighbor, say continue to grow. Find a new neighbor, say new neighbor, continue to grow. So don't think where you are right now is all there is to be. The more, the closer you are to God, the more you discover that you need to grow. The Bible says, but continue to grow and increase in God's grace of favor and intimacy with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you receive all the glory, but now until the day eternity begins. Amen. But what I want you to see is that God wants you to grow in intimacy with him. As you grow spiritually, 
as you grow in knowing scriptures in your prayer life, as you grow in all the aspect of your life, God wants you to grow in intimacy with him. First of all, I'd like you to know that you were designed to grow. The first man was made a man, and you know how that he fell. The last man was made a child. And in Luke 2, 52, in fact, from 40 to 52, you will see that he grew. He grew in stature. He grew in wisdom because we were designed to grow. Anything that doesn't grow does not have life. The evidence of life is growth. So don't stay where you are. Don't think all there is to you is what you've seen right now. You have to grow. And growth is deliberate. You must first of all tell yourself it's possible. Then you say, I am committed to growing. Don't try to pray for four hours. It may be tedious for you if, you if you're not used to that. But start from where you are. God told Adam, Adam, where are you? Because you can't advance somebody if you don't know where they are. Tell yourself, where am I in my spiritual life? Where am I in my career? If I want to grow, I need to know where I am right now. So there's no way you can grow if you don't know where you were, where you are. I want you to know that you were designed to grow. That's why human beings, when they stay too long on a bed, they have bed sores. Because we were made for movement. And the movement is forward movement. That's why every part of our body is looking forward. Your eyes are not behind you. They are in front. Your legs are facing forward. Telling you, God wants you to go forward. In Proverbs 4.18, the Bible says, The path of the just is like a shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. That shines ever brighter. Are you bright right now? Don't stop where you are. Shine ever brighter. Become sweeter and sweeter. Become riper and riper. Every single day of your life, be committed to growing. If you want God to use you progressively, if you want to be always relevant, then growth is the evidence of living. You must grow. You know, some people have been a pastor for 25 years. Some people say, no, no, no. We started this church together. When the church is growing, you ought to grow. When God is moving, you ought to move. You know the reason why Moses led the children of Israel for, for 40 years in the wilderness and they were going around and around? Every morning when he woke up, he would look at the glory. Sometimes the glory will stay. Then the tent will have to stay. The tent of meeting. Sometimes the glory will move. Wherever the glory moved to, they will pitch their tent and stay there. So the, the glory kept moving round and round. That was why Moses could not lead them beyond that place because he must not move beyond where the glory led him. Now we have a physical church that the tent doesn't move. So when you are coming to church, you come the same way sometimes. You live the same way sometimes. Your expectations are the same sometimes. Meanwhile, God has moved. Even though you, do, you didn't see the glory physically, they didn't ship the tent from Gilmore to Einek. <laughs> but God wants you to keep growing. Bible says when you come, you must come with the psalm. You must come with the hymn. There's a way you will have a dealings with God individually, alone with him. When you come into, into a crowd of people that love the Lord, you, just, you are like a spark. You just ignite people. People ignite you. you. You understand what it is to be in, in fellowship. I pray for you that you will shine brighter and brighter. Amen. You are made to grow. In Psalm 92 verse 12, the Bible says, the, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Do you have some complaints right now? Are you saying, yeah, it's because I didn't go to the right school. It's because I, I was raised in, 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 the, in the backside of town, in the projects. I'm here to let you know 
Now, the Bible says you will flourish like a palm tree. Anywhere you see the palm tree, you will see thorns there. Anywhere you see the seed that grows, many times they are found in the valley. Mountains surround them, but they grow beyond the things that were designed to limit them. I pray in the name of Jesus that everything that causes growth follows you home right now. Everything that causes growth follows you home right now. In the name of Jesus. Malachi 4 verse 2 is, is something you need to meditate on very well. In Malachi 4 verse 2, the Bible says, But to you who fear the name of the Lord, the Son of Righteousness will arise with healings in His wing, and you shall go out and grow. And grow. If you don't grow, there's something wrong with your relationship with God. If you don't grow, and grow fat like stall fed calves. You don't pray to grow, you feed to grow. You feed to grow. You feed to grow. In the name of Jesus, you will never lack direction. God will help you. In Job 17 verse 9, this is a common scripture in Koza. In Job 17 verse 9, the Bible says, He who has a clean hand will be stronger and stronger. Not stronger and weaker, stronger and stronger. God wants you to grow. God wants you. You see, many are called, few are chosen. Because the, the way you are when God called you, He expects you to grow stronger and stronger. Because the assignment He wants to give to you is not uh, uh, the level at which He called you. He wants you to grow and be at par with what He wants you to use it for. If you look at a young girl, when you look at her, she doesn't need to desire and say, hey, I want to have what my mommy has. Everything that little girl will be a woman is inside her. She just needs to grow. She doesn't need to pray. She doesn't need to be frustrated. All she needs for those things to come out of her body, they're already inside her. If she doesn't grow, they won't come out. So there are things as Christians you desire that the Bible has said concerning you. Oh, you are the head and not the tail. You are from above. He that is above is above all in all things. Is above all. But you notice that those scriptures are not consistent with your experience. You need to grow. They don't come out until you grow. You need to grow. You need to grow. I want to tell you a few things as I move forward. First of all, there's an inheritance for you. For everyone that is a Christian, everyone that has come to God through Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he rose with an inheritance. Bible says he, he, he came to receive glory, to receive honor. Everything he came to receive was not for himself, was for you. He came to receive riches. Inheritance is for you. Acts chapter 20, verse 32. But you will need to discover those things in the will, in the word. Now, so now, brethren, Acts 20, 32, I commend it to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? Build you up when you are built up and give you. You see, they don't give you until you are built up. You must grow. If you don't grow, you know, all of us know people that are 30, 25, but something happens to their cell, they refuse to grow. And we kind of, they are kind of funny to us. That's the way some people are in the spirit. They're like 10 years in the Lord, 15 years in the Lord, 20 years in the Lord, but they are still on feeding bottle. When you put the word, solid meat in their mouth, they start shouting, pepe, 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 because they refuse to grow. They refuse to grow. There are churches where if you speak for more than 20 minutes, everybody switches off because they are there for something else. They don't want the word. They want the pastor to walk down the aisle and tell them their phone numbers. Those are things they go to do in church. Church is like entertainment for them. They, they don't have anything they can trace in the kingdom to their name. They refuse to grow. When you belong to a family, 
When they start putting responsibility in your care, then it is said that you are, you are growing. I remember when I became 10, my father took me to the front door and said, from today, you'll be locking this door. That is why till now, <laughs> I cannot be in a place that the door is open. It's not possible. Because since I was 10, my father gave me the responsibility to be locking the whole house. We have never, never encountered armed robbers before. Because you, to enter our house, any house, even in school, you don't leave my door open. You don't leave my, it's a training I've received from when I was young. And I can never forget. The day I was 10, my father gave me a responsibility. If there's no responsibility for you in the kingdom of God, you have, you've not grown. You've not grown. So there's an inheritance for you. Those things will not come out. Oh, you want to give word of knowledge. You want to pray and there's healing. Those inheritance are for you. But it comes with growth. It comes with growth. John Austin, the father of Joel Austin, he just suddenly picked it that he wanted to be a, a church that is reminiscent of the church in the book of Acts and began to pray. And when he, was, he had prayed for many months and God told him, what exactly do you want? He said, I want people to be healed because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God said, why don't you start a crusade and see whether I will not show up. So he called for a crusade and called for the healing line. The first person he prayed for was healed. He was jumping up. You could hardly tell who was healed between them. He, was, he never believed it. Some things will never come out of you until you grow. Oh, you can look at people and appreciate it. You can look at people and say, wow, what a grace. Meanwhile, there's no child of God in the kingdom that doesn't carry grace. The Bible says the gift and calling of God is without repentance. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, every man in the kingdom for common good. You have an inheritance. But those inheritance come with growth. Some of you can preach. Some of you can. Philip did not know that the whole city could gather. He, wasn't, he was not an apostle. But he, he kept on growing. Imagine, Philip disappeared in the New Testament. There are things that God wants to use you for. You have no idea until you start growing. Until you start, you, are still, you, you stop that, that address of being in a place where they will tell you, hey, you're not prayed, though. you're not prayed for two days. Or, <laughs> you, know, you, you say, please, I'm not the pastor of the church. No, your Bible will be different. You have other versions. You start, you know, my, my growth started when I bought a Bible called Dick's Bible. And when we started Koza, I made sure everybody had Dick's Bible. In fact, it was a gift we gave to you if you were celebrating your birthday. So people used to come to church with the cover of the Bible. That's how you knew you were spiritual. My God. <laughs> I'm telling you. That was how cause I was. Oh, you see different covers of Bibles. But right now you have Christians who don't even have Bibles. They don't even have Bibles. They don't even have Bibles. When the Holy Ghost tells them, I want to show you the book of Naum. I want to show you something. One hour, they've not seen the book of Naum. They go to the content. Why? The Bible refused to open to the book of Naum. Because normally, you don't even read your Bible. Some people's Bibles are in the car. They pick it for service and they, they, they put it back there. Change starts when you start telling yourself, there's a time for reading the Word. I will read the Word for one hour. Like, I remember that time when we started growing. There was no light in our school for one year. I used to buy batteries to listen to the word. We used to buy candles to read the Bible. This thing didn't just fall on our head. Now you have everything, but you are distracted by many things. When it's time, it's time. I perceive my spirit that this time 
is a time where everywhere you turn it to be your turn. And you initiate it. You initiate it. Something will not fall on you. And you, <laughs> you know, I was just in my house. Something just fell on me. I said, read your Bible for two weeks. And, and I kept reading. I couldn't stop for two weeks. <laughs> Don't lie to yourself. You start. I said, you know what? I want to start reading my Bible. I want to start praying in tongues for 30 minutes. 30 minutes in the morning. Before I sleep, 30 minutes. Now, when you start, you, you first of all struggle. But keep, keep at it. You'll be shocked how you will plan to pray for 30 minutes. You will go for one hour, two hours, three hours. The Lord is your strength. Amen. If you want God to hand over things to you, you can't live the way some people are living right now. You must be different. I don't know whether it happens to you when you're somewhere where they, they just they talk, they, you, <sighs> something's telling you, just get away, get away. And finally, when you're alone, you say, Father, thank you. I just want to say hello to you. <laughs> and you start praying in tongues. That happens to me a lot. I don't know if it happens to you. I pray in the name of Jesus. God will enjoy you. Amen. I say, God will enjoy you. Amen. Galatians 4, verse 1. Galatians 4, and verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as the heir is a child, it does not differ at all from slaves. Though legally, he owns everything. What? It's now 6.53. <laughs> and I've not even scrapped the message at all. I just want to tell you and to build the desire to grow in you before I drop what I wanted to say. But thankfully, tonight is Tuesday, right? Hallelujah. 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 In verse 2, the Bible says, but is put under guardians and tutors or stewards until the time appointed by the Father. So, all the promises you see in the Bible, oh, you are this, oh, you are that, it comes with growth. It comes with growth. You'll be a theoretical victor if you, do, if you refuse to grow. You just talk about those things. They will not be real in your life. They come as a gift. But they come with responsibilities. Praise God. How many, of you will, how many of you will love your child to drive your car? I will. When we give back to our first daughter, we had a neighbor. He's from Illinois. He said, wow. He looked at our first daughter and he said, this is a vista that will soon become the owner of the house. <laughs> it's a saying in learning that a child that you just give birth to is a visitor that will soon become the owner of the house. When your child, the child you brought in like a baby. I used to play, play with kids that when I knew you were just tiny like this, that tiny child is now driving a car. Recently, my last son, I think yesterday, I was walking around, I was taking a walk and he was following me and he said, Daddy, when I'm 15, can I drive a car? I said, no, it's against the federal government law. You can't drive. <laughs> he said, what, what age? He said, I said, 18. He said, but I started. I said, don't compare yourself. He didn't leave this compound. He said, but can I drive in the compound? I said, yes, it's possible. Now, you know that he has a car. He loves the car. And he, I, I said, because he loved the car, I said, okay, I give you this car to you. I can, I could, there's no way I, I could give him the car. He's still 10 years old or 11. There's no way. I need to let him grow. All that boy needs to do is to grow to own that car. He doesn't need to pray to buy it. I've given it to him. That's the only reason why I've not given the car out or sold the car. I don't sell cars on you anyway. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Second Peter 3.18 Being intimate with God will make you grow. Being intimate with God will make you grow. But grow in grace. Give me the TPT version again. 
Second Peter, he said, but continue to grow. Where you are, don't stay there. Don't pray for two hours and go and meet the madman at the junction of your house. Say you want to cast out the devil. It won't work. That man will tear you to pieces. You build it. You build it. Pastor Biyome said something that blessed my life. When the Lord gave him the vision to take over the city where he pastors, he did all night prayer for two years, nonstop. Non-stop. Two years. Try to wake up for two years. And pray for two years. I mean, three months should have been okay. But you can't build like that. So I want you to develop a routine. A routine. Something you do consistently. But continue to grow. In First Peter 2, 2. I think I will stop here. First Peter 2, 2. The Bible says, as newborn babes, the Greek word is neophytos. Neophytos is the Greek word you use for premature babies. Uh, Peter went down to say, when you were born again, you are not just a baby. You are a, pre, you are a premature baby. As a premature baby, desire the sincere milk. The Greek word is gala. <laughs> Desire the gala of the word, not boon. Not that you go and listen to a preacher on the TV and say, ah, I want to preach this week. No, you grow. You, you feed yourself. Not that you listen to me and say, ah, out of what pastor preached, I could see 10 messages. Okay, it's good. It's good to preach to others. But first of all, feed. Because you can't give what you don't have. Come on, talk to me. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, the question is this. If I don't desire that milk, if I don't take it, will I grow? No. Am I born in the family? Yes. Am I living in the house? Yes. Did I take my bath this morning? Yes. Did I dress well? Yes. Am I growing? No. So what, what causes growth is different from what causes beauty. You must know and be deliberate about it. When you start praying early in the morning, when you decide to come for DP, every day, not because I just want to come and feel spiritual, not because I have a need, I want to grow. When you are tired, you don't want to come, you say, hey, I'm committed to growing this year. You make up your mind that before I sleep, I will pray for 30 minutes. So I won't be watching the movie and sleep off. I won't be, no, 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 no. I'm deliberate. Before I sleep. I promised my last son, I said, every night this year, before you sleep, apart from the general prayer, I will pray with you. And sometime ago last week, he just said to me, Daddy, good night. I said, good night. I said, no, you didn't, you've not prayed for me today. So I said, ah, that's true. Because I promised him every night this year, we will have a personal time to pray before he goes to bed. Are you following what I'm saying? What's your own decision? What's your growth instructions? What do you think if I add this to my life, I will go up? Oh, Pastor B, I don't know what you're saying is simple. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people that are listening to me on the Koza TV, people that want to move from one level to another. Maybe you are there yet. You're not there. Whatever it is you're doing, you can step up, continue to grow. Because where you are is not all there is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Let growth be your desire. In the name of Jesus. Familiarity breeds contempt. But divine familiarity breeds content. I pray in the name of Jesus. You shall be contented. God will satisfy you. As you get closer to him, God will satisfy you. 
I command every evil presence in your house, in your life, around you, please right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody listening to me. Every stubborn health problem, they are now under your feet. I pray against every stubborn high blood pressure. I pray against fatty liver. I pray against anything that you are dealing with, the thing causing sadness for you. I pray in the name of Jesus, as you get closer to the maker of all things, I pray in the name of Jesus, that routine will change from today. It will change from today. It will change from today. What is that mountain before Zerubbabel? I command every mountain. The tree that my father has not planted to be uprooted before you. In the name of Jesus, that heaviness of head, that problem in any organ, that blockade, anywhere it is, I command it in the name of Jesus to flee from you. When the ways of your man pleases God, even his enemies shall be at peace with him. Be at peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. That strange noise in your ear is over right now. In the name of Jesus, God will help you. Now your packet for 25th anniversary is delivered unto you. What belongs to you in the name of Jesus will not elude you. God will help you. In Jesus' precious name. Say to your neighbor, we need to grow. Because some things will come to you when you grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and give thanks and appreciate Him.